My name is Samir Khan and I'm an application engineer here at Maplesoft. I help our customers use and understand our technology, tools and services. In this webinar, we'll learn about some interesting new modeling technology that we've developed for hydraulic uh, modeling. We worked in partnership with a company called Modelon, and I have the pleasure of being joined today by Edo Drent, an engineering manager in the hydraulics division, and Jeff Waters, their vice president of sales. We'll start this webinar by learning about why Maplesoft decided to introduce this exciting new technology. We'll then hear from Edo and Jeff, who'll tell us more about Modelon. We'll then dive into the technology in greater technical detail. We'll discover its key features, and I'll demonstrate its use in MapleSim. First of all, just a few words about MapleSoft and the direction we're heading to as a company. As a company, our goal is to provide engineers and other technical professionals with the tools and technology they need to solve engineering problems. These challenges can be as simple as producing a design or a calculation sheet, or it could be something as complex as a systems model of a HEV from the ground up. In effect, our technology answers the question, does my design work? Is it optimized? The way we formulate the system model means that our real-time code is fast. We also have an advanced engineering research group who are developing techniques for model order reduction and simplification for model predictive control. I'd like to spend a couple of minutes just uh, introducing you to our technology stack. Our core product and the product on which all of our other tools are built is Maple. It's a tool for doing numeric and symbolic math on a computer and has a rich design heritage of well over 25 years of continual development. Around Maple, we built an ecosystem of other tools, tools for global optimization, deploying Maple documents to the web, and grid computing. Several years ago, in response to many of the challenging problems our customers were presenting us with, we released a tool called MapleSim. It's our solution for multi-domain physical modeling, systems engineering. The bulk of this webinar will be around this tool, MapleSim. With MapleSim, we also have some supporting technologies for controls design, modeling drive lines, and now an advanced high-fidelity hydraulics library. MapleSim is actually built on top of Maple. MapleSim uses Maple's symbolic math technology to optimize system models before generating real-time code. This means that our real-time code is fast. This level of symbolic optimization often means the difference between models which run in real-time and models which don't. We can deploy MapleSim models to a number of real-time platforms, including DSpace, LabVIEW, and Simulink. We're also exploring some interesting new technology called the Functional Mockup Interface, or FMI. FMI is a technology that lets you exchange model information between different engineering tools from different software developers. It's essentially uh, an agnostic framework for uh, letting tools talk to each other. So typically, what do our users, what do MapleSim users do with MapleSim? Well, they work in a number of key industries. We have users working on the cutting edge of the automotive industry, developing, for example, lithium-ion battery models or designing HEVs. We also have users in the more traditional industries of construction equipment, offshore, and marine. By and large, these users build models for virtual prototyping and for exploring the solution space, uh, for systems integration and controls design. Recently, over the past few years, we found that our customers, the engineers using MapleSim, are now building models with significant fluid power elements. These could include systems for uh, forklift trucks, sizzle lift systems, 
excavators, hydraulic presses, or braking systems or steering mechanisms. Typically, the subsystems in these models could be transmissions, they could be hydrostatic drives or actuation systems. Now, all of these subsystems, all of these models have several common elements, several key themes. They're multi-domain. They have components that include multi-body elements, tires, electromechanical systems, hydraulic elements, thermal elements, and more. The very nature of systems engineering means that you often need to generate real-time code from a model or part of the model. And they all have significant hydraulic subsystems. That may be a hydrostatic drive or some kind of actuation mechanism. MapleSim ships with a basic hydraulics library. The basic hydraulics library has a small number of essentially idealized components. It's ideal for systems where hydraulics are a small focus of the modeling and where you need to model things like uh, flow rates and pressures at a fairly coarse level. However, you may have a number of uh, more complex design considerations when you're modeling these uh, hydraulic subsystems. For example, you may need to counteract the effect of runaway loads. You may need to attenuate the effect of pressure surges due to fluid compressibility with an accumulator. Uh, you may want to model the loss in power due to fluid leakage, and you may need a wider range of hydraulic components. This demands more sophisticated modeling technology, and this has certainly been a major focus of what our customers have been asking us to introduce. Our solution is the new MapleSim Hydraulics Library for Modelon. To develop this library, we chose to partner with a company called Modelon. We'll hear from them in a minute or so. Modelon specializes in producing high-fidelity engineering libraries across various application domains. And the Hydraulics Library provides a comprehensive set of components for modeling fluid power systems, hydrostatic drives, gearboxes, steering systems, and more. It's an open system, so you can view all of the equations used in the library. Another key theme is its extensibility. You can easily extend the hydraulics component library. Within the broad framework of MapleSim, you can optimize your models. You can generate code for hardware or model-in-the-loop studies. You can linearize portions of your model. You can investigate the effects of uncertainty with Monte Carlo simulation, and you can also implement other analyses as well. MapleSim also offers solvers that can simulate the complex hydraulic network systems. We'll talk about those later. We also provide consultancy services where we work with engineers to build hydraulic models, and we have a pretty structured, well-developed approach for this. At this point, I'd like to pass the microphone over to my colleagues, Jeff Waters and Ado Drent, who will introduce you to Modelon. Yeah, thank you, Samir. This is Jeff Waters. Can you hear me? Yes, yes we can hear you. Okay. It uh, looks like you just made me the presenter, which uh, you didn't need to. Do you want to take control of the screen again? Hello? Yep, he's just sharing it now. Ah, okay. Yeah, I, I don't think either Ido, Ido or I will need to present. We'll just uh, stay in your presentation. Fantastic. Yeah, thank you, Samir. And um, this is Jeff Waters, Vice President of Sales for Modelon Inc. I will be very brief. We have a lot of information to cover today, as I've seen uh, yeah, later in the presentation. So, uh, Samir, you can go forward a slide. Um, just a, a quick word on Modelon. We're very excited to be part of the MapleSoft family. Um, I guess uh, I myself used Maple back in college, so I know it's a fantastic tool and brand and company, and uh, we're really happy to be joining forces here. Um, Modelon is a software and technology company originally based out of Sweden, but uh, we've grown to Germany and, and uh, here in the U.S. as well. 
And our focus as a company is model-based systems engineering um, applied with open standards-based technologies, uh, primarily Modelica and FMI, as Samir mentioned earlier, uh, functional mock-up interface. Uh, the, both of these open standards power almost everything that we do at the company. And Modelica is a really, really exciting way for uh, companies to deploy their models to interact with other individuals within the company or maybe suppliers or customers who have models and integrate all these together on one standard platform or standard language. Uh, we as a company have the largest number of Modelica experts in, employed in the world, and it's really uh, the focus for us. Uh, we're also steering committee uh, members for the Modelica Association which also shepherds uh, the FMI open standard as well. And uh, more importantly to, to those of you on the phone, um, I think is uh, one of the things we're most known for is our commercial libraries. Um, the hydraulics library being just one of them that's widely deployed, but uh, you know, when it comes to Modelica libraries, uh, certainly our model on libraries are the most deployed and the most used and depended on uh, around the world. Uh, so here you can go forward. Uh, so that was just a, a quick note on us, but I wanted to turn it over to uh, Edo Drent, primarily because he's a lot smarter than me. Edo is uh, based out of Sweden, and um, for those of you in North America, that makes him a time traveler. He's, uh, I think, at 4 p.m.? That's Edo? correct. Yeah, that's <laughs> correct. It's 4 p.m. You hear me? Yes. Um <clears throat> Yeah, so uh, the, the hydraulics library um, is uh, or originally from uh, developed by uh, Professor Beate, uh, Beate from uh, a German uh, University of Paderborn, uh, and he he started very early uh, developing this um, uh, library in Modelica, uh, and he has had tight connections with the Modelica founders uh, in in the 90s. And his first release actually came already in 1997, so um, we have a mileage of about 16 years in this uh, library at the moment. Um, <clears throat> nine years later, uh, Modlon took over uh, this library and uh, developed it further and made it, has it uh, commercially available. I think we can continue, uh, Samir. Um, the typical applications of this uh, library is, 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 a, is very uh, wide. It's in, uh, across different um, industries. Uh, it's deployed in motorsports where you can do uh, the gearbox hydraulic controls, uh, used for braking systems in the automotive industry, uh, and also for uh, controls in the aerospace and, and, and for the service actuation, but the overall controls. And of course, the, the, the construction equipment with booms and drives and that type of uh, application you have to think of. So it's a wide, it's a wide variety uh, of industries, and also the scale is different. I mean, uh, controls uh, in gearboxes are, are very small volumes, and in, in construction equipment, you, we speak liters or, or tens of liters, and in, in, instead of a milliliter. So it, it, it's also a very um, numerical challenging uh, problem to solve. But uh, this this hydraulic library is, is capable in, in serving uh, solutions for that type of, uh, all those types of uh, applications. Yes, please continue. So at this point, again. I think I'll continue with the remainder of the presentation. Thank you, Jeff <laughs> and Dado. So I'd like to talk about some of the key features of the hydraulics library from Modlon before actually demonstrating the library within MapleSim itself. So what are, these, what, are, what are its key characteristics? First of all, you model with physical components. This means that your fluid power system or hydrostatic drive looks like a real hydraulic circuit diagram. That in itself means models are easier to share and extend. This approach to developing physical models means that the learning curve is shallow, so new users can be productive straight away. But you also have the flexibility for more experienced system engineers to develop higher fidelity, more complex system models. 
One key detail I don't want to ignore is that you don't have to derive the system equations. The components themselves already contain all of the math and physics relationships you need to describe their dynamics. Now, the wider maple sim environment is multi-domain. You can combine advanced hydraulic subsystems with multi-body systems, electrical systems, thermal elements, as well as standard signal flow components. This is all in a single environment, in a single workspace. This means that you streamline your workflow and you're not constantly hopping about from one software tool to another. The library itself has over 150 components for hydraulics modeling. You also have the ability to extend the library with more. There are hydraulic cylinders, directional control valves, ideal and non-ideal pumps and motors with efficiency losses. You have gas and spring-loaded accumulators, pipes, restrictions, and much more. These components let you model higher order effects like uh, internal and external leakage, compressibility, valve dynamics, and more. The components are physically realistic across all flow conditions. The hydraulic components can have temperature offsets from the system, so different parts of your hydraulic circuit can have different working temperatures. This, of course, modifies the transport properties of the hydraulic oil and hence the system dynamics. There's also a wide range of hydraulic fluids, which I'll talk about later. All of the icons, all of the uh, uh, components have standard symbols. So your directional control valve within the product looks like a directional control valve in a hydraulic circuit diagram. A key theme of the library and Maple Simmons in general is uh, extensibility. You can easily extend the library with uh, custom components. There's a variety of techniques which let you do this. Within the tool itself, within the modeling environment, you can use a range of basic mechanical and hydraulic building blocks like puppet valves, pistons, and more. These are simply components that you drag onto the workspace and connect together visually. In fact, most of the top-level components in the hydraulics library are built using these basic blocks. For example, this is a plunger cylinder. If you double-click on this within the product, you can drill down and see the basic building blocks it's constructed from. This helps you to understand how the component actually works and indeed how uh, to uh, build your own components as well. We also have a tool to help you construct new directional control valves by specifying flow connections for the various stable and intermediate positions. And you can also import or write Medallica as well. And I'll show you an example of this later. The hydraulics library also has a range of hydraulic oils, fluids. These include standard ISO viscosity grade fluids and semi-theoretical models. We also have descriptions of commercial fluids. For example, there's a range of fluids from Mobile. If you actually visit Mobile's webpage, mobile.com, you'll find references to these fluids on their website. These fluid description models were built from experimental data and have temperature and pressure dependent properties. Um, the fluids are incompressible and can also have a fraction of entrained air. As any engineer or software user knows that a key part of any engineering tool is the documentation and all of the supporting material. We've worked hard to make MapleSim's electronic documentation and tutorials helpful and useful. We also have a range of online tutorials to help you learn how to use the product. For the hydraulics library, we've included a comprehensive tutorial and technical guide authored by Modelon. The first few chapters act as an introduction to hydraulic modeling and its theoretical basis. The guide then has a detailed description of the component suite, 
together with application-specific component recommendations. The guide contains all of the governing equations used in the library. These equations may have been derived from basic physical laws, like the conservation of mass, energy, or momentum. The equations can also be empirical or curve fits. These are fully referenced, so you can trace the equations back to the original journal articles and their experimental validation. Complex multi-domain system models can be difficult to solve numerically, and hydraulic models especially so, certainly more so than models in other physical domains. And this is for a number of uh, very good reasons. Hydraulic system models can generate a stiff set of differential equations. However, our developers have engineered an advanced solver that's capable of simulating these tough numerical challenges. The equations generated by a hydraulic model can have parameters that are very large in value and parameters that are very small in value in the same equation. For example, pressures can often be of the order of 10 to the 7 pascals or more, while Friction factors are of the order of 10 to the minus 3, or perhaps even smaller. This is a large range in magnitude in numbers in the same equation, and this can lead to equations that are not only difficult to solve with any degree of numerical precision, but also equations that are slow to solve computationally. Within MapleSim, we have options which let you scale large and small numbers so that the closer are in magnitude, hence making these equations easier to solve and perhaps more importantly quicker as well. You can also deploy your MapleSim model. You can generate standard ANSI C code. This is out-of-the-box functionality. The ANSI-C code includes a solver, and you can use it and distribute it royalty-free. With a range of toolboxes, we can also target real-time environments like Simlink, DSpace, and LabVIEW. And FMI is certainly a growing theme. The models are real-time capable, and as I said, they're all royalty-free. Code generation to see or real-time targets, actually leverages Maple's symbolic optimization technology. So MapleSim uses Maple's symbolic math, math functionality to optimize the system equations by removing redundant relationships, simplifying complex trig expressions, and more, to make the equations faster and easier to solve. At this point, I'd like to demonstrate the hydraulics library within MapleSim. There are several points I'd like everyone to watch out for. First of all, the component set for hydraulic modeling is comprehensive. We've covered a lot of ground there. The models do look like real hydraulic circuits. You can have temperature offsets. This means that different parts of your hydraulic circuits can have different working temperatures. We have realistic hydraulic media models. These contain both theoretical models and those based on commercially available oils from tabulated data. We have a very fast, efficient multi-body engine. It uses efficient graph theoretic methods to derive the system equations for multi-body systems. Our code generation is symbolically optimized so these are points I'll highlight during the actual demo. So let me just switch into MapleSim. And I'll start off by loading a couple of models and demonstrating them within the product. So this is the MapleSim environment. And here we have a model of a forklift truck. 
This is the animation produced by the model. The model is actually 3D capable, but it just uh, the forklift truck just moves forwards and backwards. This model was constructed by dragging modeling components from the left-hand side onto the workspace and connecting them together. It's multi-domain, so we have realistic models of uh, tires. There's a multi-body chassis together with a suspension mechanism. We also have a multi-body lifting mechanism, but this is what we're interested in. This is the hydraulic cylinder if I double click on this, I drill down and see greater levels of model detail. Here we go. So this is the hydraulic subsystem. It's constructed of several components from the Model on Hydraulics library. First of all, we have a source of hydraulic oil. We have a relief valve. This starts opening when the pressure in this line rises above a minimum value. There's a servo valve and the differential cylinder. If I left click on the differential cylinder, I see its parameters here on the right hand side. So if I wanted to, I could include the effect of internal and external leakage. The cylinder has frictional effects associated with it, and there's also a, geometric, uh, a geometrical description of the, hydraulic, of the uh, differential cylinder as well. So the length of the rod, the housing, the length of the piston, the mass of the piston, as well as spring constants and damping constants for the end stops on the left-hand side and the right-hand side. The cylinder actually contains a finite volume of hydraulic oil, so it can actually exhibit compressibility effects. So if the forklift truck lifts a weight that's too heavy, there may be some uh, unusual system dynamics caused by the fluid compressibility. If I wanted to, I could modify this hydraulic circuit to include the effect of uh, uh, a regenerative hydraulic oil. So I could feed hydraulic oil from the rod end of the cylinder back into the cap end through the directional control valve. This just makes the lifting mechanism faster. I've just switched into another model. This is a model of an excavator. Again, let me just play the animation. Let's run it four times faster than real time. So you can see the arm just following a set path. Again, this is a multi-domain model. It consists of multi-body blocks as well as two hydraulic cylinders here and here. So if I double click on this subsystem, I drill down and see greater levels of model detail. This time, the hydraulic circuit is somewhat more complex. Again, I have a flow source, a pressure relief valve, and a differential cylinder, together with a prop valve. But I also have a counterbalance valve here. This counterbalance valve is included to counteract the effect of runaway loads. A runaway load can occur when the weight on a differential cylinder causes it to move faster than the pump flow to it. This can cause unusual effects within the fluid inside the differential cylinder, such as cavitation, and that can damage uh, the hydraulic subsystem. And this counterbalance cylinder simply counteracts that effect. So I'd like to attempt to build a model from scratch. So. This is a model I'll start working from. I've already got a few blocks on screen, and I'll just complete it with a few more components from the pallets on the left-hand side. As you can see, we have tools for signal flow modeling, electrical modeling, 1D rotational and translational mechanics, a multi-body library. 
this is our basic hydraulic library, which consists of idealized components for hydraulic circuit diagrams. We also have tools for thermal modeling, modeling 1D magnetic systems like electromechanical solenoids, and we also have toolboxes for modeling realistic drive lines and tires. But uh, let's concentrate on this palette, the Model on Hydraulics palette. So I'm going to drag and drop a directional control valve onto the workspace, like so, and make hydraulic connections to the differential cylinder here. And let me just uh, complete the other connections. There are two binary inputs to the directional control valve. They govern which flow path uh, the uh, hydraulic connections take. There's a 1D translational mechanical flange on the hydraulics on the uh, differential cylinder, and I'll connect it to this simple multi-body mechanism. So this hydraulic cylinder will simply act to lift this load. In my simulation settings, I've already selected a stiff solver and some degree of numerical scaling. If I right click on this point, I can attach a probe and MapleSim lets me plot the displacement, speed, the acceleration, or the force applied to this rigid body mass. This weighs one kilogram, although I can alter its weight and the units associated with it. We programmed a large degree of intelligence into the MapleSim interface, so if you attach a probe to a hydraulic line, you can view the pressure and the mass flow rate. Let's view both quantities and let's run this model. So when I click this button, MapleSim, whoops, I think I've uh, missed out one important block and that's a fluid description. So let me just drag a fluid parameter block on screen and let's try running this model again. So when I click on run, MapleSim extracts the symbolic system equations for all of the components on screen. It optimizes them to a computationally efficient form and then gives me my desired results in a plot. And if it's appropriate, an animation. So here I have a series of pr probes. This is the displacement of the rigid body mass. So as you can see, it's being elevated by the differential cylinder until the cylinder hits an end stop at around 2.5 meters. This is the mass flow rate from the rod end of the differential cylinder, and this is the pressure at the rod end of the differential cylinder at this point. And because we have a multi-body model, even though it's relatively simple, we can hit this button and we automatically have an animation generated. So, several key points in this model. This hydraulic circuit looks like a real hydraulic circuit. We're modeling with real physical components. And this is a multi-domain model. We're actuating a simple multi-body mechanism with a mechanical connection. Let me show you something that's uh, rather more complex. This time we have another hydraulic circuit, but this time it's actuating a lever arm constructed from our multi-body tools. Let me run this. And we should see a rather more interesting animation. Again, MapleSim extracts and optimizes the system equations and gives me my desired results on a plot. But this time, I have a rather more interesting animation. So you can see the hydraulic system, the hydraulic cylinder, 
extending the rod and lifting this heavy lever arm. All of the weight is concentrated at this point. The weight's pretty heavy. It's actually 1,000 kilograms. Now, one of the key features of a tool like Maple Sim is that you can use it for what-if studies. What if my load is heavier? What if the working properties of the fluid changes? What if the dimensions or the geometrical parameters of the differential cylinder change? For example, this is the fluid parameter description. What happens if I reduce the bulk modulus of the hydraulic oil by a factor of 100. Let's see what difference that makes. By the way, this plot gives us the angle of the swing arm. Let me just run this model again, and given the change in the bulk nodulus, we should have somewhat different behavior. Okay, again, this is the angle of the swing arm, but this time it looks as if we have oscillation in the multi-body swing mechanism. Let's run the animation, and there we go. Because we've reduced the bulk modulus of our oil, the fluid is com more compressible, and of course we get some uh, interesting dynamics in the system. Now, if I wanted to, I could also set a temperature offset for the differential cylinder. This would change the transport properties of the hydraulic oil, and again, that would alter the system dynamics. Now, I can also make the hydraulic circuit rather more complex. Here, I've loaded up another MapleSim model. On the right-hand side, we have the swing mechanism that we've just simulated. There are no changes here. On the right-hand side, we have the same swing mechanism, but this time with a regenerative hydraulic circuit here, we've made a connection from the rod end of the hydraulic cylinder back to the cap end via the directional control valve. Given the difference in cross-sectional area of either end of the uh, uh, cap, this means that the swing mechanism will extend far, uh, faster with a regenerative circuit. So let's just run this model just to confirm uh, our understanding of the system. So this plot gives me the angle of the swing arm for the mechanism without the regenerative circuit and with the regenerative circuit. Here I can see that the model with a regenerative circuit, with all other parameters being the same, reaches the maximum angle about a second faster than the model without the regenerative circuit. This is a pretty interesting behavior. I can also include the a basic control mechanism as well. Again, this is the same model, but here I've used a series of components to regulate the on-off switches, the Boolean inputs on either side of the directional control valve. 
So in this version of the model, the swing arm rises to the maximum angle, holds for, I think, about two seconds, lowers to the minimum swing angle, and then rises again. And certainly, I think uh, this model demonstrates the flexibility of the MapleSim platform. You can have a high-fidelity description of the dynamics of the model, but you can also include a control mechanism as well. I mentioned earlier that MapleSim is built on top, of, on top of Maple. You can use Maple to analyze your MapleSim model. So if I go to the View menu and select this option, Create Attachment, I have access to a number of pre-engineered Maple templates, templates for sensitivity analysis, optimization, multi-body analysis. I can investigate in the effect of uncertainty in the system with Monte Carlo simulation. I can linearize portions of my model. There's a wide variety of other templates for connectivity to Excel, interfacing external code. But I'm going to select the code generation template. One of the key features of the combined MapleSim and Maple platform is that you can generate fast, real-time code for models. I have two applications on screen now. I have MapleSim in the background and Maple in the foreground. And this is the code generation template for Maple. This lets me generate standalone ANSI C code. At the top, I have an embedded MapleSim component, which is a live link to the model I'm building. I can simply select the subsystem for which I want C code. The input to the subsystem is simply the pressure applied to the directional control valve, and the output is simply the angle of the swing arm. Now, the cogeneration template has a number of options. I can pick the solver I want embedded in the source code, so everything from uh, a simple Euler solver to rather more complex range cutter methods or an implicit Euler method suitable for stiff systems. I can select the degree of code optimization as well. So if this bar is all the way to the right-hand side, MapleSim performs full index reduction for complex DAE systems. It simplifies trig relationships. It removes redundant relationships. It evaluates, um, it factors out repeated expressions in the equation system so that they're solved numerically once, but the result used many, many times. And here we have the standard ANSI C code. So there's some documentation at the top indicating the state variables, the input and the output of the system. But this is the ANSI C code. You can use it uh, in your own development projects, and it can be used royalty-free. There's no restriction on its use. Now, you can also extend and modify the component set in the hydraulics library. There are a number of ways you can do this. So many, I think uh, most of the top-level components within the, hydra within the hydraulics library are built from a set of basic building blocks. So if I drag a differential cylinder on screen and double-click on it, I drill down and see the basic components it's constructed from. This helps me to understand how the top-level component works, and it also gives me a better sense of how I can build my own top-level components. The top-level components uh, are simply available in the product, so you can simply drag and drop these on screen to create your own top-level hydraulic components. You also have an elements library, which allows you to construct your own valves. 
You can also import or write Medallica. And that's what I've done here. Here, I'm modeling the flow dynamics of three tanks connected together with pipes. These pipes are actually base hydraulics blocks. They're long lines. They model the, they're a discretized pipeline model, and they include the effect of pipe friction, fluid inertia, and compressibility as well. I can select the number of discretized elements I want in the pipeline, so I've just picked four for each of the two connecting pipes. But these tanks are actually Medallica custom components. If I double click on this, again, I jump into Maple, but this time I have my Medallica code definition template. And this is just the Medallica code that we've written to model the tanks. It's a fairly simplified description of a tank. It uses fairly simple uh, physical relationships. But you can mark, create much more complex hydraulic components using Medallica. As I said, you can either write Medallica or import a Medallica package. So that was everything I wanted to demonstrate in the tool itself. I think we have, I think, uh, 10 or 12 minutes remaining of this presentation. What I'd like to do is finish off by discussing some upcoming features in the hydraulics library. And then I'd like to open the floor for questions. Both Jeff, Ado, and I will be available to answer your questions. So what are the guys at uh, Modlon working on? What are they doing to extend and refine the hydraulics library? Well, in the pipeline, they have two new features that are particularly significant for the aerospace industry. In the aerospace industry, jet fuels are commonly used for hydraulic control systems, and at the same time, these fluids are used for the cooling of those systems as well. Modlon will include jet fuel properties in future releases of the hydraulics library. They'll also include uh, thermohydraulic functionality as well. The current hydraulics library is built on basic mechanical balances, but it doesn't uh, account for heat flows in the system caused by the work done on the fluid. By including a thermohydraulic fluid description, uh, temperature becomes a state in the set of equations generated by the hydraulics library. And again, that's a useful feature for the aerospace industry. I'd like to encourage everyone to visit our website, maplesoft.com. We worked hard on making it informative. There's a rich level of detail about the hydraulics library and MapleSim on our website. I simply go to maplesoft.com. Um, I'd like to highlight our MapleSim model gallery. It's an online repository of well over 200 models. They've been developed by us and by our customers as well. Um, I think the forklift truck and the excavator model that I demonstrated earlier are actually hosted on the model gallery. If you'd like to ask us technical questions about the value that MapleSim and the hydraulics library can offer you, give us a phone call. Our number is here. Or you can send an email to the applications team at this address, applicationsengineering at maplesoft.com. I'd like to thank you for attending our webinar today. And if you do have any more questions, please do contact us. Thank you.